Hi there, welcome back to our series. In this video, we'll delve deeper into the importance of maintaining anonymity when reporting sensitive issues. We know that the word anonymity simply means the state of being unknown. In reporting, anonymity means not revealing the identity of someone where the person passing information is non-identifiable, untraceable, and untrackable. Media, as we know, has the power to bring to light social injustices and bring about social changes in society. It acts as a platform for the voices of people when their voices are taken away. So many girls have complained of sexual harassment against him, and yet no action is being taken by the government. As powerful as the media is in informing, educating, and uplifting the society, it is also flooded with misinformation. This rise in misinformation has led researchers to state that we are currently living in a misinformation society. A Reuters survey also backed this statement as it showed that citizens globally are concerned about the growing incidences of misinformation. Therefore, it is important for the media to take into account basic ethical and safety principles, which otherwise can put GBV survivors, their families, and those who are helping them at risk. In this day and age, our personal information is all over the digital world. Every website we visit prompts us to log in. Our name, email, phone number, and address are all over the web, and they've become very easily traceable. In this world where privacy has become a luxury, safeguarding our anonymity is crucial in certain cases, especially while reporting sensitive issues. Take the Me Too movement for example. Everyone's talking about how India's Me Too movement has taken off. Started in 2006 by an American activist, the Rana Burr, the aim of the movement is to support survivors of sexual violence. The movement became an internet revolution as survivors all across the world started calling out their abusers. As anonymity was an option, the survivors could come out without fear. Tarana Book herself supported the right of the survivors to remain anonymous. This show says the role that anonymity plays when it comes to sensitive issues like gender-based violence. In the recent brutal incident that happened in Manipur, where two cookie women were paraded naked, we saw the media blurring out the faces of the survivors for this same reason. This shows us why anonymity is important while reporting gender-based violence. The reason that women tend to choose to have their anonymity when it comes to gender-based violence is due to the deep-rooted stigma in society. For many in India, rape shows a survivor as an object of shame. Indian criminal law reinforces the idea of modesty. It narrowly defines rape as requiring penal penetration and other sexual offences fall under crimes concerning outrage or insult to the modesty of women. Thus, the rape survivor is often considered impure or damaged. Due to this prevailing stigma, the survivors tend to face exclusion from society. Not just the survivors, but their families are also scrutinized in such incidents. Therefore, anonymity acts as a protection shield when it comes to gender-based violence. Gender-based violence is an act that has physical, psychological and sexual consequences for women. It takes a toll on the survivors as they are processing the psychological impact of the incident. Therefore, more attention towards them might worsen their already troubled state. Anonymity allows survivors to live without the constant fear that their abuser is watching their every step. It allows them to seek help, access justice, and rebuild their lives. As we discussed, anonymity makes it easier for the survivors to come forward to report violence, and at the same time also helps them to provide more precise and accurate information without the fear of judgment. In sensitive issues like gender-based violence, Elaborate and accurate data is crucial for understanding the scope and extent of the problem, which eventually helps in building effective strategies and policies to combat the issue. Therefore, the media coverage of gender-based violence must prioritize the safety and well-being of survivors. Journalists and media organizations must approach this responsibility with care, sticking to best practices while ensuring the accuracy of their reporting. This includes having first-hand sources, two or more reliable independent sources, and double-checking the facts. Reporters and other media professionals must prioritize survivors' right to dignity, privacy, confidentiality, safety, security, and protection from harm. They should think twice if and how a story could in any way violate any of these core principles.
This way, we can promote a safer and fairer society while maintaining the role of a free and responsible press in a democracy. In the next video, we shall discuss gender-based disinformation and political campaigns against women politicians and the way they are subjected to online violence and smear campaigning. This is a video series developed under Fakshala Innovation Lab, a media literacy incubation program by Fakshala where we talk about gender-based disinformation. We have more important topics coming up, so stay tuned. Like and share this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video.